A little bit of fun for me tonight. I haven't shown this on the channel yet. It arrived a little while ago, a curve trace adapter. This is an older style tech that allows you to visualize voltage, actually current over voltage instead of voltage over time. We'll see how it works. Um, I think it's gonna have a place on my bench. I ordered this from eBay. It was out of Thailand. Only seems to be one person making it nowadays. Well, this has got a learning curve to it. Uh, all I had was some 75 ohm coax, and I don't think that's my problem. I think uh, I have to figure out what the scaling should be, and the closest I can get to a half decent curve is 10 and 10, but the, the, the voltage doesn't make sense. If I go to an LED from 25 volts, no, that isn't right. Uh, the current limiting seems to work. I just can't interpret what this, this isn't right. Uh, maybe you've got to divide it by 10, like two and a half, that makes sense. So at 10 volts, maybe each division is one volt. That might be what it means. Um, I'm not sure without the manufacturer manual, I don't know, and they didn't give me any instructions. But now that I, that just occurred to me when I fired the camera up, that must be what it is. Two and a half volts, that would make sense. And our LED is lit. Okay, I didn't know I could do the invert function and that makes more sense now. So we're inverted the right way for a curve tracer to work. And I, this has gotta be it. 10 volts, 10 volts, two and a half up. Um, I'm gonna mess around a little bit more, but I think I got it. That's pretty cool. And a big diode, about half a volt. And on a resistor, we get our nice sloped line, which is what we would expect uh, current gradually going up, the higher the voltage. Pretty cool. And we queue up a Zener diode, and guess what? We get the pattern exactly what I would expect from a Zener diode. Forward voltage, about a half a volt. Turn on, there's our current flow. Uh, about four and a half volts back, we get our Zener, we get our reverse current flow. Isn't that cool? Now, that is what I'd expect, so these these values gotta be right. Um, I'm gonna do some research, but uh, I can't make a video on this because I am nowhere near an expert, but I can sure learn how to use it, and that is pretty cool. Now we can characterize components visually, which, always works for me yeah i like i'm a visual guy i like i like scopes i like to measure things visually and now we can compare two components exactly to each other and we're not just measuring the turn on value we can see everything all at once which is super super cool and uh yeah a crt scope might be a little bit better for the xy visualization but this will do i'm super excited about this and with the lead shorted out, one last test, we indeed get a vertical line as we'd expect. Current flow straight up, no voltage required. Cool. T800 approves. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. As is the usual, things spiraled out of control starting with just a simple task. It started with just putting this bag of diodes away that didn't have a place. Now it has turned into all of this, but the diodes have a place now. I'm pretty happy with this. Transistors, diodes, and more transistors. All in trays now. Easy access, easy to find. I'm going to label them all with the different voltages and it'll be really easy to select things out. Pretty cool. And a day later, dollar store, yeah, it's time to get everything organized and all these caps that have been barely crammed into these containers. Well, now we can. <laughs> Tip of the day is to just commit on this stuff because this stuff doesn't stick around at dollar stores for very long. I don't know how long this stuff will last. It's pretty, it feels pretty good. What sucks is you get used to one style of container and then you have to switch to another. These ones actually are pretty cheap, but I don't know how long they'll have them. So this is where my spring cleaning led me. 
All these containers are now empty and are contained in only uh, from here down of these. And I'm pretty happy with that. This is a, this is a pretty cool little spot now. First one, uh, we did DuPont connectors and some jumpers inside there. So all nice in order, really happy with that. JSTs, all the pigtails. You've seen this before. This is all my uh, brass inserts for setting into 3D prints so that I can put threaded uh, bolts and stuff in. Resistors, power resistors, uh, ceramic and just standard through hole, all in one case. Here's the rest of the JSTs. Uh, this was a whole lot of boxes before and now we're all in one. Pretty cool. Capacitors. More capacitors, this is all electrolytic. Uh, pretty cool to be able to finally get in there. They're not in specific uh, size order, just more or less by physical size. And that leads me to the right area pretty quick. Transistors, uh, just put the assortments in here because uh, there's so many small containers that it's easier to just put them in as a whole. And that worked out pretty good. And that's it. Not too bad for spring cleaning. I'm really happy about this one. This one was just way too many containers. Pretty cool. Also got some BNC cable from Amazon. This is 75 ohm. Uh, so was this, this unruly mess for the curve tracer. Uh, it was just no good. These will be a lot better. I wish I could have got 50 ohm, but just couldn't find any uh, with this small coax. So uh, I'll keep my eyes open. 75 seems to be just fine for the curve tracer. I, we're not doing high frequency stuff. We're just testing components. So these should be fine. And there, we've got an X and Y up to the curve tracer down behind. And now I can just hook in any time I want to swap over from my normal probes over to the curve tracer. We're all set. And shorting the leads out indeed gives us a vertical line. No problem. Working perfect.